Let's discuss on-site oil analysis applications for oil and gas driller uh, industries. This is an industry that actually has really uh, moved forward with on-site oil analysis because it has seen a huge return of investment by investing in this type of technology. Let's discuss for a minute some of the major reasons why that is the case and what they look for and what their concerns are when it comes to fluid analysis and how it helps them out. If we talk about typical types of oil and gas drilling, we're focusing on the drilling side of the business, so what we would call upstream to the industry. There are two major considerations, land-based drilling or offshore-based drilling. All of these will have some sort of a major deck or a crane, and on those you've got a series of, of equipment which is used to actually extract the oil or natural gas out of the ground. Um, the key area, the key pieces of equipment in all these rigs is the power plant. Um, usually these are diesel gen sets. They may have an AC generator with them. What they're doing is driving a series of gearboxes in the case of the draw works, which is controlling the pipe, the, 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 the drill as tools. You can have rotary drives, uh, HPU hydraulics, top drives, mud pumps. Um, and, and in some situations, you can also have additional uh, draw works, clutches, torque converters. All of these types of equipment are on board a drill system. If it's in a marine environment, you have all of those. And in addition to that, you also have the propulsion systems that are operating the actual offshore platform or FPSO or floating platform ship operations. All of these... The drill activity in those particular cases is separate. It's almost a separate plant from the propulsion systems. There are different types of rigs out there. All of them have different versions. The older systems that are commonly or used to be seen on uh, mobile systems are mechanical systems. That's where you have a direct drive from the engine directly to the drill system. Um, newer systems nowadays are electrical driven. You have AC variable frequency drive systems which allow very precise control. You also have SCR, silicon control rectifier, or DC systems. They're the major popularity because they're extremely precise, very easy to work with. You can control them very precisely. So the drilling companies are very familiar with these, but almost all of these systems share some of the major equipment we described earlier. Rig activity varies according to the oil price, as you might imagine. At any one time, there's probably 10 to 20,000 rigs worldwide in operation, both land and offshore. These are very harsh environments with a high cost, and essentially it's very hard to make money unless your primary KPI, the oil price, has to be at least up to $55 or more in order to make money. Some industries in some parts of the world, you can do less than that, but most of the time, they need to be able to do that to make money. The major equipment that, uh, the reasons why this industry has embraced on-site oil analysis is quite interesting and it has uh, important lessons for other fleet managers. They have a series of remote mobile rigs, which means that the rig can oftentimes move around or in the ship application or an offshore application, it can be far away from general logistics. So oil labs sometimes have a tough, tough time actually supporting it in a traditional method. So that, for that, they like to do it on site. Um, turnover and the personnel skill set is widely uh, varying. Um, oftentimes you have a four weeks on, four weeks off. So sometimes the operators who are operating the equipment need to have simple tools with diagnostics on the reports ready to go so that they can make sense of the information as soon as the instrument has it. Time for oil drain intervals is a huge opportunity for cost savings. If they can extend the drain interval with confidence, they can save a lot of money because it costs a lot of money to transfer the lubricant to the job site, if it's offshore, even more so. Um, in addition to that, the time it takes to change oil means that they're not drilling. And if they're not drilling, they're not making money. So any cost savings that they can do that is of major improvement. And not lastly, but, but not least, the cost of disruption is a major issue. So if they can detect mechanical wear faults early in advance, they can pre um, site the critical parts and equipment, which often can come from many, many uh, different uh, vendors and different uh, locations, and they can stage these at the right locations in order to be able to maximize their window of maintenance turnaround time. 
On-site oil analysis equipment, when it's actually deployed on these sites, if it's in a land or a mobile application, it's generally done by way of a support vehicle or a dedicated container, a support container. Um, in some situations, if you have a variety of rigs that are um, in a general geographical area, they may have a centralized repair center or maintenance center, and the equipment will reside there. If it's in a platform or offshore application, it's also on the top of the platform, um, or it's in the repair area. So a good comment is we don't do the oil analysis at the equipment because the API requirements are intrinsically safe. The equipment is, is generally done in the repair block or in the tool area that is de dedicated and separated from the actual equipment location itself. Data management of, is of huge interest with these type of fleet managers. What they have is a lots and lots of equipment of very similar style and type. And so what's of real interest to them is to be able to gather the data collectively across a wide variety of applications and be able to influence their OEM analysis and buying preferences. They buy a lot of equipment. They like to know what the reliability level is so that will influence next generation purchases. They also like to rationalize lubricants or focus on high quality lubricants with their oil suppliers. So they will discuss that and having on-site analysis to discuss that is critical. Uh, quality decisions are a major issue. Maintenance resource allocation is another major issue. To do with the repair system, what happens is, is that if you know when the equipment is about to break down, then you can basically organize and allocate your resources to be able to look at uh, when you need to have that done. So oil drillers and gas driller applications, when you're dealing with these uh, drilling systems, there's a series of equipment, as we've mentioned earlier, that they have. They've got engines draw works, torque converters, drives, a whole series of different systems. So if we classify these in terms of the type of equipment that they are and the major concerns, let's discuss that. So for the engines, because they're the power plant that drives everything, that's a major concern and it's a big concern for every uh, fleet manager. They're worried about extending the drain interval safely. Um, they are generally required to change the oil out over so many hours. If they can stretch that out an extra 50 or 100 hours, they make money safely. They're concerned about water and coolant contamination from the environment, uh, as well as maybe cooling systems uh, contamination. They're actually quite worried about lubricant mix-up. This is unique to this industry more so than we would see on other types of fleet applications. And the main reason is, is that the locations that these rigs are often, especially in developing countries, the actual fluid uh, that should be present is not always available. So sometimes the goal is throw any oil in there. And of course, if you put a hydraulic oil into an engine oil, you're going to have a risk of actually causing the engine to fail. Fuel dilution is a major concern. Again, they tend to drive these engines really, really hard. There's a lot of idling when the system is not working, so you actually have a lot of potential for fuel issues. Because you're dealing with mud, that's the fluid, the material that's being pumped into the well as you're extracting the oil or gas of interest, mud or dust is a major concern, and it's the number one contaminant, and any of that can cause some wear. So you want to be watching out for the effects of that if it's present in the oil and also the wear that results on that. Likewise, with the rotating equipment, you have a lot of gear transmission systems or gear drives. So mud contamination will generally lead off as the number one ingression issue that will cause problems. You'll have a lot of water, especially in, uh, uh, in tropical uh, environments. Wrong oil, similar to the engine. You don't get the right oil to work with. Wear, ferrous debris, all of those are major issues. Um, Long life is not necessarily a big concern there. They expect to leave the oil in these systems, but you can have leakage, and so there's a lot of top-off there. So things like uh, long life considerations generally don't figure in. Hydraulic systems, obviously anything that's power transmission, uh, the newer systems that are using hydraulics or electric motors, also air compressors or compressor systems, you're worried there about the particulate that could cause problems with the power transmission. So filtration, how well are your filters? Are they efficient? Is there a lot of solid debris getting in there? Water content, obviously that can have an effect on the power transmission. 
wear that can also have an effect on clearances for pump valves uh, as well as uh, uh, servo valve clearances will all be affected. Ferrous debris, if there's a lot of debris being generated as a result of this. And again, if there's any excessive heating or overheating that causes the oil to degrade. All of these are the big concerns that the fleet managers are looking for on a day-to-day -day basis. So with that in mind, what are the key tests? Well, the most common test that you see in, in on-site oil analysis is pretty consistent what you see on any typical oil analysis report. Everything from TVN, oxidation, nitration. And what we have here is for the major types of applications. TVN, oxidation, nitration are necessary for engines. Oxidation more so just for the rotating equipment. Viscosity is critical right across the board. 100 degrees C is very helpful for engine applications with multi-grade systems. 40 is very important for single grade for rotating machinery. Contaminant elements are of real interest. So we're running a spectrochemical analysis. We're particularly interested in things like silicon, calcium, barium. Barium is a byproduct of the drilling mud that's used. Wear elements, all your major wear elements are considered iron, copper, nickel, aluminum, tin, uh, plus many other elements depending on the engine design or the gearbox design that's there. Additive elements are critical to determine if you're using the right mix oil. If you've got engine oil versus hydraulic oil, that's going to play a role in there. Water content, critical across the board. More than 2,500 parts per million, 0.25% is going to start to cause excessive wear and corrosion issues. Glycol, you don't want to see it showing up in the engine um, oil. If it's present, you've got a coolant leak of some sort. Soot content, it's an air fuel ratio or your air filters or breeders are not working properly or you've excessive idling or a leaky fuel injector. Uh, likewise, particle count for hydraulic systems, also for certain gearbox applications, gives you the indication of when you have a cleanliness issue, also for compressors. Ferrous density, we strongly recommend for some of those rotating equipment because it can indicate when you've abnormal wear occurring, so it's the first sign of severe wear coming down the line. And then, of course, fuel dilution to validate what's going on if you see a drop in viscosity. So with all of these tests, uh, they are well handled by our Microlab series. There's different versions out there. The base model is the 40. We recommend certainly for these type of applications, the 43, where you can incorporate some of the other products in there as well.